Hello, it's Jay here again, and welcome to another tutorial. So, first of all, I would like to apologise for not getting a lesson up last week. Um, some things happened away from YouTube, but never mind that. I'm back, and let's get straight into the lesson. So, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make some improvements add a few things to what we've already done before we continue forward so as you can see i'm in the main menu script and i'm going to copy this line the texture 2d for the background so let's just copy and paste that in below and we'll change it to main menu title tidy up the comments and we'll change the comment so let's scroll down and we go on to come to the void on GUI so we'll just keep going so here we are the on GUI and this little block here where we draw the background we're going to copy and what we want to do is draw the title after the background so it needs to go below this We'll paste it in and we'll just swap out the variable. So main menu title, tidy up the comment and we can save that off. So let's downsize this for now. We'll come to the GUI. Now as you can see, I've made a title GUI. Um, it needs to have a transparent background as mine has here and as you can see the texture type is set to editor GUI and legacy GUI and what we can do is just assign these in here so with those assigned let's hit play and we'll see how it looks so as you can see, I've just made this quickly, just for demonstration purposes, for the, obviously for this series, it's, um, you can spend as much time as you like, make yours as elaborate as you like. This is just a quick one, just for testing. And let's come back to the scripts. We can close the main menu script now. And we're going to come to the controller manager script and this is where we're going to make the majority of changes or additions should i say so i'm going to come up the top here we're going to open and close the square type of bracket we're going to come inside and say require component open and close bracket inside those new brackets type of we'll open and close brackets again and inside those brackets we're going to say audio source into the comments add audio source when attaching the script and we just save that there for a moment now because we already assigned the script to a game object we'll still need to add it manually um, but i like to still put that in and it um, helps if you decide to reuse the script somewhere else or maybe you decide to rebuild the project, whatever. It's in there now. We'll come to the splash screen. And we'll actually come to controller manager, add component, audio, audio source. With that in place, let's come back to the script. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a couple more variables. The first one can be of type private, audio source. We need to give it a name, let's say CM for controller manager, so underscore CM audio. Let's close that line off into the comments. defines naming convention for controller manager audio source 
We'll come below. This needs to be of type public. Is going to be of type audio clip. And we need to give this a name. And we'll say underscore controller detected. And we'll just say audio clip. Let's close that line off into the comments. Create slot in inspector to assign controller detected audio clip. Okay, with that in place, let's come now to the void update. We're going to say if open and close brackets inside the brackets controller detected double equals true into the comments. If controller detected equals true we'll just say return and we'll close the line off. And the normal comment. So we'll say then do nothing and return. So exactly how it reads. If there's a controller detected. So it equals true. There's no need to do the code that's going to come below here. However if a controller is not detected. And if the startup is finished. So let's get that in. If open and close brackets, start up finished, double equals true, into the comments. If start up finished equals true, we'll come below here. And what we're going to say is time with a capital T dot. And then we want time with a lowercase t scale. We're going to say equals zero. Let's close that line off into the comments. We'll say then set time scale to zero. So let's save this off. And we'll just go through this quickly. So if there's a controller detected, we do nothing else. That's why the return is there. So if a controller is not detected, so the controller has come unplugged from the PC, but startup has finished, which means we've got past the splash screen and we're in the controller warning scene or further on, then what we effectively do is pause the game by setting the time scale to zero. And with that in place, let's come into the late update. Now, we don't need to grab the audio source if we're still in the splash screen. But if we've moved on from the splash screen, so the startup is finished. So let's get that in. If open and close brackets again, start up finished, double equals true, into the comments. If start up finished equals true, then we do need to grab the audio component. So we'll say underscore cm audio equals get component. Open and close brackets, audio source, we'll come to the end of the line, we'll open and close brackets again, we'll close that line off. So at this point we get the audio source component. We'll say then get audio source component, we'll compare and uh, make it equal cm audio you don't have to put that last little bit if you don't want to but for those of you who um, it will help remember you could put that in so if we're past the splash screen let's grab that audio component and then we're going to come here the two if blocks for the ps4 and the xbox controller now this code must come between 
these two balls. So PS4 controller true, controller detected true, and the same for the Xbox. If it's not in this order, it will not work. So please bear that in mind. And let's come here. And what we're going to do is copy the first if block from the void update. If controller detected equals true return. And let's paste that in. And we'll also paste it in here. We'll tidy up the comments. And the next code is going to come in here. So. If controller is detected equals true, it will equal false the first run through. So while it's equaling false, do the code we're going to input in here, then set it to true, and then when it cycles through again, it will do nothing and return, and this chunk of code will not be read. But we've got to put that code in, so let's come here and actually we just need that first line if startup finished equals true let's paste that in and if it is equal true then we're going to say underscore cm audio dot and then we want to play one shot and then we want to play our controller detected audio clip so open and close brackets close that line off controller detected audio clip let's break that up for commenting so i'm going to enter it there if startup finished equals true then play will come to the next line the controller detected audio clip tidy up that bit of comment there and we need now to copy this line the time dot time scale equals zero let's paste that in below and we're going to set this back to one we'll change the comment and in fact we can put in the brackets the default so if a controller's become unplugged, controller detected will equal false. So it will skip over this block. And we make sure that startup has finished. We play the controller detected audio clip. We set the time scale back to one, the default. So the game is moving at the correct speed. We set controller detected to true. Then when it comes back round to reading again, it hits this block and just returns. And then none of this is read afterwards because it doesn't need to be. And it's a great way to optimize code. So let's copy this if block along with the time.timescale line and we paste that in. And we don't need to make any further changes. So let's just save that off. We'll downsize that. And we just need to assign a sound effect. I'm just assigning a random one just for testing. So with that in place, let's save scenes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up without the controller plugged in. And then we'll plug it in, we'll unplug it, and we'll see how things work. So, let's hit play. We'll just leave it for a moment to cycle through the uh, splash screen. Okay, we're in our controller warning scene. Now, just bear with me, I'm just going to grab my gamepad. And I'm just going to plug it in because it is a wired gamepad. So just bear with me one moment. This USB is a little tricky to get to. Controller detected. Game will now start. So we'll let that fade out. So we're in the... We're now in the main menu. Let's unplug the controller. 
So the controller is disconnected and we're going to plug it back in and as you can hear that little pling sound is the new audio clip we've just assigned but what I'm going to do is just stop that again. Now I know the music still plays but pay attention to the main menu buttons because what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the controller and if you notice the buttons will stop fading in and that's because the time scale is now at zero but when I plug the controller back in they should start to fade back in again as normal just uh, excuse sorry about that a bit of a uh, not very good uh, USB port on this PC I'm afraid that will what caused that little bit of jitter but there you go as soon as I plugged it back in the button started to fade back in again and we'll stop that there and I think we'll leave it here for this video so we'll keep coming back as we've done in this lesson throughout the series just to polish little bits up and add a few things and just make it so once the series has finished you end up with a more polished game so i hope that's okay with you all i hope you all understood what we've done in this lesson but as always if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below or you can private message me and I will always do my best to try and answer for you. But as I said, we're going to leave it here for this video. So as always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.